101 Habits for Daily Success with Steve G. Jones, Module 1. Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Florida, a master's degree in education from Armstrong Atlantic State University, and a doctorate in education from Georgia Southern University. I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist, a member of both the American Board of Hypnotherapy and the National Guild of Hypnotists, and I'm president of the American Alliance of Hypnotists. I'm the director of the Steve G. Jones School of Clinical Hypnotherapy. I also serve on the board of directors of the American Lung Association in Los Angeles. I have over two decades of experience in hypnotherapy, and I still maintain a busy practice and teaching schedule because I see clients and teach classes worldwide. My client base consists mainly of people who want to lose weight, stop smoking, or gain confidence. Other clients include sales teams interested in boosting motivation and increasing income. Also, singles looking for love, insomniacs desiring proper sleep, and actors desiring more confidence for their next audition. When I travel to see clients and teach hypnotherapy certification classes around the world, I visit such places as Tokyo, Japan, Barcelona, Spain, Paris, France, London, England, Montreal, Canada, Los Angeles, California, and New York, just to name a few. By the way, since you have an interest in hypnosis, perhaps you'd be interested in becoming a certified clinical hypnotherapist. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com, and click on Hypnosis Classes at the top. You can either train in person or online. After your training, you'll be added to our worldwide directory of certified clinical hypnotherapists, and you'll receive a certificate. I was fortunate for many years to have my office in Beverly Hills, California, where I worked with such wonderful people as Tom Mankiewicz, the writer of Superman, Geraldine Saunders, the writer of The Love Boat, and many other celebrities. I have been interviewed on CNN, Fox News, and appeared on True TV, in addition to having my own hypnosis TV show. With my over 20 years of experience, I'm happy to share with you techniques that I've both developed and learned which can help you improve your life. I encourage you to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. There you will find my life's work, 22 books on hypnotherapy, over 3,000 hypnosis recordings available as downloadable MP3s or CDs, and these recordings will program your mind to achieve goals in such areas as weight loss, motivation, and stopping smoking. I also have audiobooks, such as this one, where I'm talking with you and sharing with you in a very dynamic way techniques that you can use to improve your life and the way you do things. The reason I'm telling you all of this is not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I, your teacher, am very capable and I know what I'm talking about. I'm also very happy for the opportunity to share this information with you, so rest assured that you're in good hands and let's have some fun as we now expand your knowledge. I wish you well in all of your endeavors, and please be sure to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. Welcome to the program that's going to revolutionize your life. I'm going to share with you my habits, my daily habits for success. If you take these habits and implement them in your life, you're going to find that your success skyrockets. So let's go ahead and jump in. Habit number one, use daily affirmations to stay positive. Using affirmations helps you train your subconscious mind, but be careful not to mention the challenge that you're working on to eliminate from your life. Affirmations should be short, emotion-packed, and realistic. And the reason you don't want to mention the challenge you're working on is because that can program your subconscious mind to dwell on it. So mention the positive. What are you working toward? What would the resolution be? What would it look like if you overcame it? I use affirmations every day, and the way I use them is I write them on my mirror in my bathroom. So for example, if I have an affirmation that I'm working on for making a certain amount of money, let's say I want to have X amount of money in the bank. Well, having X amount of money is nice, but how about putting a number on that? So let's say that you want to increase your bank account by $10,000. And let's say for simplicity's sake that you're starting with zero money in your bank account and you want to get to $10,000. Well, you want to state it as if it's already happened. So you would write it on your mirror. And by the way, I use a black Sharpie and you can write in your mirror with a black Sharpie and erase it with one of those green scrubby pads and a little bit of water. Just don't use any abrasives and it'll come right off. So you can write with a black Sharpie on your mirror in your bathroom. I have $10,000 in the bank now. Now, why do you write that? If you want $10,000 in the bank, 
but you don't have $10,000 in the bank, why would you write that you have it now? How is that an affirmation? Well, the way it works is your subconscious mind sees it as reality, yet it doesn't see it in your everyday life. So your subconscious mind looks for ways to make it happen in your everyday life, to make it part of your reality, to make it real. So when you do that, when you write that down, your subconscious mind says, okay, it's real, but I don't see it. Let's make it real. Let's fill in the gap. Let's fill in the gap between what I know is true, which is that I have $10,000 in the bank, and the reality, which is that it's not there. Your subconscious mind is going to bridge that gap for you by looking for opportunities for you, by you acting on opportunities that previously maybe you would have passed up. So by stating things positive in the here and now as if they've already happened, this allows you to make things happen. And I recommend writing three affirmations at a time. Write them on your mirror so that you can see them before you go anywhere for the day and after you're done for the day, before you go to bed, you can see them. They become part of your life. You are reminded of them. I want you to realize that affirmations make all the difference in the world. Affirmations are what set in motion your day. If you think about it, when you get up and you say something positive, well, you're going to draw positive things to yourself. That's the law of attraction. What you put out, you're going to get back. So it works on a day-to-day -day basis. It also works throughout your life on a bigger scale. If you consistently put out positive thoughts and vibrations, that's what you're going to get back. You're going to get positive things back. Even if you just smile at somebody in the moment, you're going to get a smile back in most cases. Well, if you're smiling at your life, you're going to get a smile back from your life. So you can use this to expand and cover your entire life. If you are consistently putting out positive ideas into the world, keeping your thoughts positive. I know life happens. I know things come up. Every now and then you're going to have a negative thought, of course. But if you do your best to keep your thoughts positive, well, that's what you're going to get back. You're going to have a lifetime of positive things happening to you. So affirmations are very powerful because they help you stay focused on the positive. They help you make that a priority. So use affirmations to your advantage. Let's face it, a lot of people use negative affirmations. They say, oh, why am I so stupid? Why did I do that? Oh, I do that every time. Well, that type of affirmation is not very helpful. It's just going to get you more of the same. Realize the way the law of attraction works, you're always going to get more of the same. Whatever you put out there, you're going to get back. So I want you to get in the habit of putting out positive ideas. And you can do this by using daily affirmations in order to stay positive. Habit number two, get plenty of sleep to optimize your mind and energy levels. Learn your body's natural sleep rhythm and schedule your sleep length accordingly. Do this by recording the amount of sleep you need in order to wake up without disruption over several days. So in other words, you're learning how much sleep you need. When you wake up and you feel good, you've had undisturbed sleep and you time that you time how long that was. So let's say I slept for eight hours, undisturbed sleep. I woke up and I felt good. I'm going to write that down. Eight hours. Happens again another night. I get undisturbed sleep. Eh, it's maybe seven and a half hours. I write that down. Happens again another night. I get undisturbed sleep. I wake up feeling good. Maybe that was eight hours and 25 minutes. I write that down and I can take the average of that and figure out that approximately eight hours of sleep undisturbed is what I need in order to wake up feeling good. Then I know how much sleep I need, and I can schedule my sleep length accordingly. Also, set a bedtime that gives you 30 minutes more than your natural sleep length, because let's face it, you need time to calm down. Number three, visualize your goals frequently. I want you to keep an eye on the prize by daydreaming about how things will be. Imagine how everything looks, sounds, feels, smells, and tastes when you achieve success, and allow yourself to experience the emotions of what it will be like. My good friend John Asaroff, who is in the movie The Secret, uses what he calls vision boards. And all that is is a piece of poster board that he puts up on his wall and he cuts out pictures from magazines and newspapers and anywhere else he can get pictures of things he wants or things that represent what he wants. Happiness, a new car, travel, travel to a specific place better yet. He will cut out a picture of that and put it up on the vision board. Well, what does that do? That reminds him of what he's working hard for. John Asroff is a busy person. He's a family guy. He's got kids and a wife. So the work that he does should pay off. In other words, if he's spending time working, what's he working for? When he looks at the vision board, he remembers, ah, a wonderful vacation with the family, a wonderful time with the kids. 
So seeing that vision board reminds him of what he's working on. Also, it reminds him of why it's important to him. Number four, remind yourself of what you really want so it remains a priority. I want you to continue to draw strength from the end results that will keep you focused. List your long-term goals and post them in a visible place. If you catch yourself losing sight of your priorities, then just review your list. Number five, assign time slots to work on your goals and stick with them. You know, properly managing your time allows you to focus on each task. Use a timer or keep a clock in view to keep yourself on schedule rather than allowing anything from preventing you from keeping track of time and keeping yourself on track. Also include an hour of free time each day in addition to the breaks. Number six, take several mindset evaluations daily to stay motivated. If you wear a piece of jewelry or carry a trinket of some sort as a reminder to check your motivation level, this will work wonders. And what I mean by that is that there should be something that reminds you of your goals. It's just something that you wear and you say to yourself, this is going to remind me of my goals. So when you see it or touch it or notice it on you, it reminds you of your goals. And when you find that your motivation is waning, in other words, going down a little bit, remember why you set your goals. Allow that trinket or piece of jewelry or whatever it is to remind you of why you set your goals, why they're important to you. These evaluations will prevent you from falling into a slump. Number seven, exercise to increase blood flow to the brain. At least 30 minutes of exercise each day will improve your body's ability to feed your brain. When people are less active, they tend to lose clarity and focus and realize that exercise also increases energy levels so you can get more done in less time. Exercise is so valuable. I've noticed that during times that I don't exercise, I'm more prone to being stressed. Exercise increases your endorphins, allows you to feel good, and actually gives you tremendous physical benefit because you're increasing your endurance. If you're working on increasing muscle mass, you can increase that. So many benefits from exercise. It also allows you to relieve stress. So realize the power of exercise, and I want you to incorporate that. When I'm traveling, I'll find excuses to walk instead of take a taxi. I'll also do exercises that require little to no equipment. For example, using an exercise band for curls or just doing push-ups. All I need is my exercise band, which is light and easy to pack. And for push-ups, I don't need anything. I just need a floor. So realize that you can incorporate exercise into your daily routine no matter where you are and no matter what you're doing. Number eight, do something completely for yourself for one hour each day. You time, you know, time for yourself is very important for psychological health. It also prevents you from becoming burnt out and exhausted. And this daily dose of feel good time helps your brain recover from strenuous use. Number nine, keep a smile on your face and wear it proudly. You know, studies show that those who regularly smile feel better in general. Smiling is also contagious and will spread to others around you. Watching yourself smile in a mirror is even more effective. So all you have to do is several times a day go in front of a mirror, look at yourself and smile, and believe it or not, this is going to set off a reaction in your mind that's going to give you benefits. It's actually going to allow you to feel better. Number 10, maintain a clean, well-groomed appearance. You will see yourself as a more successful person and it's going to reflect in your actions. Also, if you do this, others will take notice of you and have more respect for you. Keeping up your hygiene and looks shows that you care. Number 11, take pride in your clothing. I want you to dress to impress. The way that you dress can significantly impact your opportunities. So keep your clothing stylish, free of wrinkles, and clean. And wear appropriate clothing based on where you are. Number 12, ask yourself what you can do to improve every morning. When you're having breakfast or brushing your teeth or getting ready, ask yourself, what can I do to make myself even better today. And this will help you prepare for the day to be as successful as possible. It also gets you thinking of the long term. Evaluate your previous day and improve one thing today. There's always room for improvement. So now you have the first 12. You've got them. I want you to apply them and join me in module two as I share with you even more powerful habits that you can quickly and easily make part of your daily life. I'm Steve G. Jones, hoping you have an outstanding day.